everything around us is constantly changing and moving. To make sense of it, to make predictions in science and technology, we need to understand how things change. In mathematics, the rate of change is called the derivative, and the laws that govern them are called differential equations. My name is Nikita Nikolaev. I'm a mathematician here at the University of Geneva, and I study differential equations. More specifically, I use methods from the branches of mathematics known as algebraic and differential geometry. These are vast and complex areas, but their essence is roughly speaking the following set of ideas. In school, we normally learn about two distinct areas of mathematics. One has to do with numbers and equations, and another has to do with shapes and sizes. In the early 17th century, the French philosopher and mathematician René Descartes developed a way to convert lines, shapes, and spaces into numbers and equations. This is the idea of coordinates. Since then, mathematicians wondered if you can take advantage of this conversion in order to solve problems in the realm of numbers and equations by using the intuitive geometric ideas about curves and shapes. This was a giant leap forward, which gave rise to the beautiful and revolutionary mathematical way of thinking, which is now called algebraic and differential geometry. Differential equations really do appear absolutely everywhere, even in situations where nothing seems to be moving or changing. Take, for example, this rainbow. If you look closely under its main bow, you can see an interesting pattern of pale pink and green arcs which rapidly fade away. In the 19th century, the British physicist George Airy became interested in this pattern of light intensity, and he successfully explained it by employing the remarkable interpretation of light as a wave. Rather than a stationary ray, light travels in space more like a wave on the surface of the water. These ideas led him to what is today a very famous differential equation, and it now bears his name. It's called the Airy Equation. In it, x represents roughly speaking the angle between the sun and your eyes formed as a water droplet suspended in the air, and f of x represents the light intensity when this angle is x. From the point of view of mathematics, though, it really doesn't matter what x and f of x represent. You see, one of the greatest powers of mathematics is that it is an abstract, formal science, and therefore the physical meaning of these quantities is irrelevant. This practice of abstracting the phenomena you encounter is absolutely bread and butter for mathematicians. The equations they study have a life of their own, completely detached from reality. But the solutions to these abstract problems bear extraordinary consequences for science, technology and ultimately our daily lives. And the fact that the physical significance of a problem is irrelevant in mathematics means the same solution can very often be applied in very different contexts, like rainbows and water waves. Returning to the Airy equation as mathematicians, for us now, x, which we call the variable, represents any number, and we visualize it as a point on the continuous number line. f of x represents a function of the variable x. It is a quantity which can change if x changes. Then the Airy equation says that the second derivative of f of x, in other words, the rate of change of the rate of change, is proportional to the function f of x itself, and the proportionality, x, varies depending on where you are on this continuous line. It turns out that for this differential equation, as well as for many, many others, it is more fruitful to think that x varies not just on this continuous number line, but actually on an entire two-dimensional plane. And in fact, we should think of this plane as wrapping onto itself and into the surface of a sphere. Mathematicians study differential equations on surfaces with even more complicated geometry. It's a very tricky idea, I know, and it took the best mathematical minds centuries to come to terms with. But it is a very important leap in imagination that has profound ramifications. Differential equations are notoriously difficult to solve. 
In fact, they're so difficult to solve that many mathematicians, including myself, study the properties of differential equations instead of solving them. This is because, you see, even when you can write down an explicit formula for a solution to a differential equation, which is very rare indeed, more often than not, it is not actually very useful, because it may be very difficult to use it in order to deduce any sort of helpful information. In fact, what usually happens is whatever information, whatever properties we have discovered about the solution, we've discovered it by studying the differential equation itself without solving it. In mathematics, it turns out, almost without fail, that it is much more useful to study not mathematical objects themselves in isolation, but rather relationships between mathematical objects. And over the centuries, mathematicians have been hard at work developing tools and methods to study relationships between differential equations and how to use this knowledge to understand them better. My main research topic is developing a contribution to this large library of tools. This method is called abelianization. To explain how it works, I'll give you an analogy. Imagine you have a heat source sitting at a point on a surface, and you're trying to understand the differential equation that governs how the heat from this source dissipates across the surface. The more complicated the differential equation is, the more complicated is the dissipation pattern. The main idea behind abelianization is to zoom into the heat source and think of it instead as made of several elementary heat sources but which are interacting in some complicated way. What we do then is we separate the interaction information out and reassemble these elementary heat sources into a single differential equation, which is much simpler but on a surface with a more complicated geometry in order to encode the complicated interaction information between the elementary heat sources. The caveat is that abelianization by itself doesn't actually help you solve your differential equation more easily. But remember, we've already said that solving differential equations isn't necessarily the goal. Instead, we can use abelianization to translate the complexity of the differential equation into the geometry of the surface, and therefore use our strong geometric intuition to help us make sense of that complexity. What's more, we can use it to understand better the complicated relationships between complicated differential equations in terms of simpler relationships between simple differential equations. And this brings us back to the ideas behind algebraic and differential geometry. I use geometry to solve problems about differential equations, contributing to the long and very successful line of thinking that has revolutionized modern mathematics.